Good morning. Today is week like seven, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Week nine of our little mini challenge. I cannot believe it. YouTube is doing great. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but, uh, yeah, I want to send out the, uh, prizes before Thanksgiving. So, we just got, like, six, six, seven, nine, a few more weeks before I send them out, so, I don't know. Let's start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Hmm. Are you ready for a new week? Uh, I don't know if I am. Uh, today is September 11th. Um, what's interesting is they were talking about September 11th and the um, National Day of Service. And the guy talking was like, half of you weren't even alive for it. And I was like, what the heck? How is that possible? And then I was like, Oh, yeah, it was over 20 years ago. That's crazy. It's crazy to think about. Okay. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Matthew 27, 51. Whew. Sorry. From the day days of Moses onward, the tabernacle in the wilderness contained a linen veil separating the two compartments known as the holy place and the holy of holies. The holiest of all places could be entered on only one day of the year, the day of atonement, and only by one man, the high priest. There he sprinkled blood upon the altar and called upon Jehovah for mercy in behalf of the nation of Israel. Now the great and last sacrifice had been, whew, I'm so sorry, had been offered and mercy extended through the blood of the Lamb of God. The law of Moses had come to an end, for it had been fulfilled in Christ like the flesh of Christ, which was torn for our sins. The veil was rent in twain as entrance to the holies the holiest of places, the celestial kingdom, was made available to us. Sorry, that was a little choppy. All right. So today is first, nope, second Corinthians chapter one. Um, and he's just giving salutations. Um, let's see. God comforts and cares for his saints. The saints are sealed and given assurance by the spirit in their hearts. Um, it was kind of hard to, like, as I'm reading this, I'm like, oh, okay, classic Paul. Can't really understand it. Great, great. And I'm trying to find a verse that speaks to me. And I'm reaching the end, I'm reaching the end, and nothing. And then there was one little line in verse 24, which I was like, okay. That'll be my thing. That's the one thing that sticks out to me. It says, not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. And for my personal statement, I wrote, it's a question instead of a statement, do I seek dominion or am I a helper of joy? The, the line that stood out to me was, we are helpers of your joy. That's what stood out to me, and I was like, an interesting thing. Am I a helper of joy? Do I help people have joy? Do I contribute to it? Or as Neil A. Maxwell says, do I feel that I am obligated to be the opposition in all things? So anyways, that's what I got from this chapter. Luckily, we have Jeffrey to expound. Our reliance upon the forgiving, long-suffering, merciful nature of God was taught from before the very foundation of the world. It was always to give us hope and help, a reason to progress and improve, an incentive to lay down our burdens and take up our salvation. May I be bold enough to suggest that it is impossible for anyone who really knows God to doubt his willingness 
to receive us with open arms in a divine embrace if we will but come unto him. There certainly can and will be plenty of external difficulties in life. Nevertheless, the soul that comes unto Christ dwells within <sighs> dwells within a personal fortress, a veritable palace of perfect peace. Whoso hearkeneth unto me, Jehovah says, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear and evil. That is exactly what Paul said to the Corinthians, trying to help them keep their chin up. And the Corinthians had a lot to be grim about. He wrote, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I have no thoughts on that. Uh, the next one is chapter 11, which isn't until next week. So we'll set Jeffrey aside for a while. Um, I really have no extra thoughts on this chapter. Um, so I guess I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I don't know. It seems kind of short, but it's all good. Okay. I will leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is the 11th, and this prayer is for travelers. It is anonymous. To our brethren that have departed from us or are about to depart, Elder Holland, in whatever place, give a fair journey whether by land or rivers or lakes or highways or in whatever way they may be traveling, restore them all everywhere to a tranquil harbor, to a safe harbor, vouchsafe to be their fellow voyager and fellow traveler. Give them back to their friends, rejoicing to the rejoicing, healthful to the healthful, and preserve, O Lord, to the end, our sojourning also in this life without harm and without storm. All right. That's all I have for today. It's Monday. Let's get back to work. All right. That was Second Corinthians chapter one. And tomorrow we do chapter two. We will see you then. Have a great day. Bye.